Hi, this is Tony Kay. You are listening to Ray Shasho on Interviewing the Legends. Hello once again, everyone. I'm your host, Ray Shasho. Welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends, brought to you by the Rockstar Chronicles <laughs> Series 1. My new book featuring over 45 intimate conversations with the greatest music legends the world will ever know. It's available now at bookbaby.com and amazon.com. Tony Kay is best known as the original keyboard player with prog legends Yes, his Hammond organ giving their groundbreaking The Yes album its most distinctive sound within the Yes catalog. Following his departure from Yes in 1971, Kay was involved with a number of other bands, including David Bowie, Badger, Flash, and Badfinger, before returning to Yes for their greatest commercial success, 90125 in 1983. Kay remained with Yes for several albums and tours before retiring from the music business in 1996. Following the reawakening of his musical inspiration in 2001, Kay accepted an invitation from current Yes bassist Billy Sherwood to work on projects which led to the formation of Circa in 2007 and has yielded four albums to date. Today's latest release, Tony's latest release, is entitled End of Innocence and will officially be released on September 10th on Spirit of Unicorn Music, uh, distributed by Cherry Red Records to mark the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Please welcome legendary keyboardist, songwriter, producer, and manager best known as a founding member of the progressive rock band Yes, Tony Kay, to Interviewing the Legends. Hello, Tony. <coughs> Hello, Ray. That was, a, that was a, a very long intro. You got it all right, though. Well, not, re not really, because there's a lot more you, do you have done. <laughs> so I could have gone on and on, but we wouldn't have an interview. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, man, I love the new album, okay? End of Innocence, you did a, uh, a heartfelt tribute to everyone that was involved with 9-11. Um, and it, it's, it's, a, it's an excellent, excellent album. i give you five stars for that. Well, thank you. Um, it, was, uh, it was a very, uh, very interesting uh, project, uh, of course, and it's taken a, a long time to and I actually, you know, started the day after the, uh, the terrible event uh, that day. What, what, what inspired you to put that into music the way you did, you know? Uh, well, I knew I had to do something. You know, I I, I was retired. I hadn't. Um, I'd left the the uh, the Yes tour, and I, I hadn't really played in about five years. And um, and September 11th happened, and uh, it was uh, and it inspired me to uh, to actually go to the garage and unpack my keyboards, which which had been in their cases for uh, for over five years and so it it really started like that and uh, there's several pieces actually on on the album uh that came out of uh, the, the, the first recordings that i did you know it's amazing because i can picture the moments of 9 11 with every track that you, you do it it was uh set to music you know perfectly and oh well uh, thank you that yeah. that was the uh that that was the intent i i i wanted to um i, I wanted to 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 picture the, the, the things that went on through the day and put it uh and beyond actually it it, it turned into the you know i i got into you know the the, the the war and uh, the political things that uh, that happened after, but but basically it was you know what happened during the day. You know, it's it's interesting the way you started it off on track one with a a simple lullaby of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and then you you know you get into that innocent lullaby that gets into the I guess they call it like a menacing storm uh, that right. gathers. That, that and, was my wife, by the way. She's uh, Besides being a doctor uh, in, in health and whatnot, she's a, she's a, a very uh, good singer, 
musician, guitar player, so I got to actually sing on the album. Well, Dr. Dan Danny, right? She's got a PhD. Um, uh -huh. Not only does she do what she does uh, with the, uh, I guess, health uh, and, and you know making sure people eat the right things and that kind of thing, which is mm -hmm. you know, very important. Yeah, today, of course. she wrote uh, uh, one of the songs uh, right at the beginning, uh -huh. uh, almost maybe two months after after it it, it happened. Uh, we actually met and and got together uh, just after um, September 11, and um, she wrote. I asked her to write something for what I thought was going to be an album that was going to, you know, be done a lot quicker than that it has. And she wrote the uh, the song uh, "Sweetest Dreams" on the album. Well, she's very talented. Not only that, she's an actress. Uh, she's been she on TV. Is. She's, she's amazing. She's been on movies. She speaks several languages. Uh, mm -hmm. You hit the jackpot. <laughs> I got very lucky. <laughs> well, so did she. Okay, <laughs> let's let's, let's uh -huh. make let's make it even here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> But also her, uh, I guess her, it was her mother was also very famous as well, right? She's, um, she was also, I guess, in movies, what I understand. She was, she was um, an Austrian actress right. and came to Hollywood and did several uh, big movies before moving uh, back to Vienna uh, to, to work on the stage. Uh, so I, I think there was a, a lot of, uh, genes that were handed down to uh, to uh, Danny. You know, it's am it's amazing. You know, when you're so talented as a musician, that the artistic in you comes out. There's so many you know musicians like yourself that are also artists and paint beautifully and do other things. You know, I think that's just marvelous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she has. A, uh, we recorded a, a few years ago. Um, when we lived in Los Angeles, uh, uh, she recorded an album called "Have No Fear," which uh, which has done uh, quite well, and it's a really really nice album. She's got she was born in Spain and uh, and has a lot of uh, flamenco uh, things going on with her guitar playing and her yeah. songwriting. Very influenced by. Uh, music yeah my my mom's my grandmother was from Spain as well and my uh, my uh, grandfather was from Catalonia or you know the, the uh, from the old I guess the old country or whatever so uh -huh. yeah we got roots from Spain as well yeah um, another cool thing the album cover which I love the album cover you know it's 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 real it's surreal it's 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 scary you know, at the same token, and of course, it's by the uh, legendary Roger Dean. Yes, I I uh, we met Roger on the on the yes, uh, cruise to the edge. Right. And and uh, we uh, we talked a lot. He had, uh, of course, he was the the artist on really my first uh, solo band solo album, uh, which was One Life Badger. Uh, recorded um, supporting yes and uh, of course Roger was the artist um, for, for that album cover so he had the original painting there on the on the boat mm -hmm. and uh, we we got to talk uh, we got to talk a lot and then um, I sent him the uh, the album and uh, he loved it and said he would like to do the cover um, it's quite dark and quite stunning, but, right. but appropriate for for that day. Well, yeah, it's appropriate for the music and, and for the event. It's it's perfect. Um, I, I want to mention some of the titles of the uh, the album of the tracks, which go along perfectly because it, it kind of uh, you know does kind of a timeline, you know, of, of the events. The, the way you have it in sequence. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, the 911 overture, 
kind of a spacey instrumental, which is one of my favorites uh, of the track. Uh, New York City blues, piano solo. A little, a little blues, a little, a little of my favorite, uh, mm -hmm. depicting the, uh, the New York atmosphere. Exactly. Uh, Battle Cry was scared the crap out of me because you also have the Arabic sounds in the background, which I noticed, you know. Uh, we, we, yes, a little, uh, a little Arabic uh, influence, some music going on there. Which, oh. make, which makes sense. <laughs> uh, another favorite piece of music of mine. And you, you mentioned 285 Fulton Street, which is the, world, the address of the World Trade Center. Uh, another very well done yes, track. That, that was an, um, an instrumental uh, that was sort of influenced the, 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 the backstory to that is uh, the, the very first band that I actually uh, went to see in my hometown of Leicester when I was, I don't know, maybe 16, 17 years, probably 17 years old, uh, was a bond organization. Right. And I pictured listening to them, my first concert, and and of course, uh, Graham Bond was a, a master organ player and was very, uh, very influential in what I came up with later um, because he was the first guy that I saw who uh, turned the B3 up to 11 and, hmm. and, uh, and <laughs> it was, it completely changed the way that, uh, that I thought about the B3. Right. And of course, you know, uh, Jack Lewis and uh, uh, Ginger Baker was in the band, and I, and I sort of emulated in that uh, in in that track the jam mm -hmm. that uh, they very much were when I, when I saw them. Um, and so I, I I sort of tried to emulate that. Right. As a, it, <clears throat> next track, you know, Let's Roll, which is Flight 93, uh, very, another very passionate piece, you know, piano piece. Uh, oh, they the, the classical sort yeah. of uh, piano. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That depicts the, uh, you know, the plane that uh, was taken over right. and the, the, the guys on the plane tried to... Uh, I tried to stop it, and of course it, it crashed into the field. Um, that was the inspiration of, of that song. Uh, that track. Yeah, on Flight 11, uh, your track, the track called Flight 11, uh, you actually have the conversations between the stewardesses and the tower that implemented in the track. Right, yes. Try to, um, I, I, I try to draw the picture of, um, of what it must have been like a plane, and um, it's 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 had a, a, a dramatic piece of uh, um, music of semi <laughs> excuse me semi rock semi <clears throat> orchestral, and and I got the transcripts of um, the, the the actual recordings of the uh, of the conversations mm -hmm. went down with the tower and it. It fitted so well that uh, it, 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 it's kind of difficult to listen to. I don't know yeah. what you thought, but it, it, it's a little difficult to listen to, but it is what it is. It is what it is, right. Exactly right. And there's some very powerful drumming in there by, uh, is it Jay Shelland? Jay Shelland? <laughs> Yes, Jay was yeah. uh, he was a drummer, and um, of course, you know, I I I've known Jay since she was 17 years old. Right. And uh, when he first came to Los Angeles, and actually, we played together uh, late 70s in uh, Badfinger. Mm -hmm. So Jay and I've been friends for for a long time, and uh, and of course, he now sort of you know drum. Second draw down in in yes, uh, and so I was very happy to uh, to play on it. <clears throat> and Jay Jay also plays drums in one of my favorite bands, Circa, which uh, you know I've talked to Billy Sherwood several times and told him how much I love the band. 
and we'll talk a little bit about Circa after we talk about the album. But uh, uh -huh. yeah, a great drummer. Um, great drummer, yeah. yeah. And of course, Danny does her thing on Sweetest Dreams. Uh, beautiful voice. Um, you know, it's following the collapse of the towers. Um, that had to been the tough one to, to sing, you know. Uh, you know, with, so yes, it's really a, a really a, a, an homage to the uh, to the f first responders, to the mm -hmm. firefighters. It, 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 that's what she was picturing when she wrote the song. And she wrote "Sweetest Dreams" as well. I didn't know that. She did. Yes. Wow. Huh. Great track. Very very beautiful track. Uh, Aftermath was after that. Another beautiful piece of uh, music. Then you got you come into the the, the heroes, uh, the battle, which also implements some Arabic sounds and voices in there. Uh, yeah, so the depiction of, of what went on in uh, in Iraq was mm -hmm. uh, uh, a little a little challenging, but uh, I I don't think the, uh, the 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 picture was complete. Um, until I had, you know, tackled that um, musical thing, and uh, it was uh, it was a, it was a little tough to uh, to record that one, and was done in a, in a, a, a couple of uh, a couple of time frames. One uh, the beginning was some music that I, I did many many years ago and the the middle part I did uh, quite recently actually the uh, of course moving here and COVID happening uh, gave me a chance to uh, review a, a lot of it you know because it actually came out um, or some of it as far as the music very different and different mixes about six years ago um, because I got into uh, I, th I thought that I you know I kind of wrote it to the movie you know to right. the day to right. the reality of of, uh, of, uh, of the, what I thought was uh, you know the images mm -hmm. of what was happening and and, um, and of course I movie came out and I, I went into that with Avengers and uh, actually did a, a, um, a 40 minute video with with the music that was was on YouTube for, for quite a long time <clears throat> yeah I was going to ask you about that putting the music to a video I, mean, I was thinking about the whole album but I wasn't aware that it was on YouTube. Is it still there on YouTube, or is it not there anymore? No, no. no I, I I took it down because um, the, the music changed. Right. Um, and I, you know, it, it was kind of complicated in in a lot of ways because you know a lot of the the, the, the music at the beginning, um, you know, the the overture for for instance was actually recorded on a, an eight track cassette because huh. I, I didn't have um, I didn't have digital performer right. At, 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 right at the beginning and so it it went through a lot of changes mm -hmm. um, mix wise and sonically and uh, eventually all of that music that I did at the beginning w was transferred to digital performer and and um, tracks and, and so, yeah, so I, I thought I would take that down. But it was actually, and of course I was really a beginner in, in the art of editing. So yeah. it was, it was um, you know, a challenge. Yeah, I have trouble as well. I, I'm really good at editing sound, but when it comes to video, I'm a very novice, and I need I need some help doing that as well because I do a lot of Zoom interviews now, and it, and I have a hard time editing that. And I'm like you; I do everything myself, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I got Final Cut Pro um, uh, a few, uh, three years ago, right? And so went went from the uh, the beginning to the iMovie, which is you know fairly easy to master, right? Um, Final Cut, but I, I love it. I, I, I love uh, uh, 
Well, would you like to put the final music to a video? I mean, I mean, really, you know. Maybe. <laughs> Well, there's hope. <laughs> it, yeah, yes, it, it, it could happen. Um, we, we will see. Okay. I mean, that would be, you know, if it's, it would be fantastic. I mean, I would, I would love to see that. You know, I mean, I, I haven't seen any. I mean, all you see with nine one one is the negativity of the whole incident and just the news footage. But if you had music that kind of you know, soundtracked the events. That would be that would be incredible. Yeah, I mean, I tried to I, I tried to bring out some of the uh, you know the more positive uh, right. things. Not not that there was really, um, but but ho I mean, hope and triumph at the end was, exactly. was a track that, uh, that that really came out of the. Uh, uh, the the whole political war thing, mm -hmm. um, so I, I, and, and of course, the end of the of the video um, was portrayed by the the new building. Mm -hmm. Right. So there was there was a lot of uh, um, there, there was a lot of hope, uh, you know, coming coming into the music too. And I think that comes out in the in the the, the last two tracks. Although Homecoming it really is is about the uh, you know the lost um, warriors that uh, that came back from uh, Iraq. So right. Uh, right. Yeah, I was going to mention Hope and Triumph. The song fits the title perfectly, and that that was that was masterful. I think he did a great great job on that. And, wow, thank you. Yeah, and Ground Zero is a perfect ending. The track perfect that was that was a perfect ending to the to the, the uh, album. I think I think I won you over, Ray. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it's a great it's it, you know, it's, which is which is what which is what I was hoping, you know. I mean, it, it was a, a very emotional endeavor. Yeah, I can imagine. And, um, yeah. You know, I, I'm I'm hoping that people will, you know, listen to it and actually experience what you are telling me you you experienced. Well, you know, your timing is good too because with COVID, for the last couple of years or so, you know, I, sometimes we lose track. That, that's our problem here in America is we forget things too quickly, you know. And uh, 911 was, you, you can never forget that, that time. I mean, what, what was it, almost 3,000 people passed away during mm -hmm. that? It's, um, it's something we can never forget. And I think your timing's good because it brings it back into the, the forefront, you know, after all this nonsense with COVID, you know, all this horrible stuff. Well, I didn't, have any, I, I didn't really have any plans or, right. uh, to bring it out um, or a record company that, that, that was interested enough in it. And actually, you know, after a couple of years, it sort of, uh, um, you know, left people's consciousness mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, the years, the years passed and uh, it, it, it was sort of forgotten, really, uh, unfortunately. Right. Um, it was, it was very, uh, very forgotten by the, by the media, by the news media, media. and uh, suddenly, almost 20 years uh, passed, and, um, and I thought uh, two years ago that, you know, I maybe have to bring this out sure. <laughs> before the anniversary, you know, and it, it, it worked out well, actually. And I, I was stuck here through COVID and stuck in the studio, so uh, I had no excuses. Sad thing about living where we, we live, you know, I'm in Bradenton, you're in Sarasota, is that the, uh, those hijackers are from Venice, that they, they went to Venice Airport. <laughs> which is just a few minutes south of us, and that's where they learn to fly. And you know that that I think some of them were I actually. Got to, I got to know the, uh, the 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 person who trained them. 
Oh, really? What, what does he say <laughs> about this? He, he, he doesn't say anything. He doesn't, he doesn't, yeah, I don't blame him for not talking. I mean... No, he, he's a, uh, obviously a little disturbed by it, and, um, but, yeah, he, he lives close. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I've been to Venice uh, Airport many times in that, in that whole area there. It's a nice little town. I want, I want to change I want to change direction now and talk about yes uh, I've had every oh. me, I've had every member of yes on my show except for Steve Howe. <laughs> Steve oh, something got Steve to talk <laughs> that's what I hear that's what I understand but you know I love John I've had John on the show several times great guy I had Rick on recently uh, Billy Sherwood he's welcome anytime he wants he's a heck of a guy real nice guy. <laughs> Um, did, did did you know that uh, Billy Sherwood's godfather was Milton Berle? Did he tell you that? I did. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He has a <laughs> he, he has a very uh, very very deep uh, Vegas uh, connection, of course. Because and, of his dad, uh, yeah. Both of his parents being in in the biz and right. uh, performers. Very interesting. Yeah, he he did. Uh, it's funny because when he met. When he came out to Vegas to see Milton Berle, he was in drag. He was all dressed in drag, which was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, you were on the Yes album, which was probably one of the most important albums that Yes has put out because it, the album kind of set a standard for live concerts because all those tracks is what they play in concerts, <laughs> you know? And and you were there, you know. What what was that like in the beginning, in the early days of Yes? Well, before that, it is true that um, in, in fact, when I uh, when I came back into the band for the fiftieth uh, anniversary, um, what they wanted to play was Yours Is No Disgrace, You Know Good People. I mean, it was uh, Starship Trooper, of course. Exactly. And Starship Trooper has ended a Yes show forever. So yes, it was uh, it was great actually revisiting uh, those tracks. Although of course I had played them a lot in the in the eighties and nineties. Right. But, uh, but it was great. It was it was it was great visiting the uh, the old tracks. It's uh it's kind of cool the way the band worked. You know, from the first album, you know, they were playing. You guys were playing a couple of covers. I think you had a Beatles cover in the beginning, and we know. had a lot of covers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah. Um, of course, uh, no experience necessary. Beatles. Uh, uh, West Side Story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yeah, I, that's I, what we did. We had we really didn't have any original material yeah. at, at, right at the beginning, and we became sort of known as uh, as this you know uh, form of re rearranging other people's songs um, in a very um, strange way. You guys were brilliant, man. I, I told Chris Squire when I interviewed him, I thought you guys were from another planet. <laughs> 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 you, you, you know, I can tell the influence of Simon and Garfunkel, uh, especially with Chris, you know, because, you know, one of the albums, you know, his solo album blew, blew me away with Fish Out of Water. Uh, uh -huh. And he, he does, you know, a song called Silently Falling, which is, of course, um, it, it, it's a lyric in the Simon and Garfunkel song. So, and then, of course, you guys had America. So I, I could hear the Simon and Garfunkel kind of, you know, influence uh, with, especially with Chris, I probably with the whole band. Uh, more with John, I think. Uh, John and Chris. Right. Yeah, I think the, uh, the, the 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 harmonies of uh, Simon and Garfunkel were were, were very uh, influential uh, to John. And, you know, John became, of course, the, the combination of John and Chris's uh, voice was obviously very important, and yes. Well, now, now you left Yes, or I don't know if you got fired or how, how that happened, but I guess there was a bit of a conflict 
between your style maybe and what Yes was doing at the time? Is that what happened? Well, yes. I mean, there, there, are, there were several reasons. Um, but, but certainly, you know, the coming of uh, new technology, mm -hmm. um, you know, with, with uh, Mellotron and Minimoog was really not to, particularly to my liking. I, um, I didn't really like them. They sounded mostly out of tune to me. So right. um, it was sort of a little, little grating on my, uh, on my senses. And, you know, I, I, was a, I was a Hammond player. I was a Hammond player primarily. And, you know, that's really what I wanted to play. And, and of course, they were going in a different direction, a more exploring, you know, the new technologies. And, uh, and of course, you know, Rick was uh, perfect for, for that. So, um, yeah, there was there, there was definitely conflicts in in that way. Also, I had my own band, right. and you know, which took me into a different uh, a different direction anyway. And also, my preferences in in music were right. um, uh, uh, quite quite a lot different to uh, to what John and Chris were. were thinking about you know i was a i was a huge band fan so it, you couldn't get more different <laughs> yeah so what, what kind of music um uh, did you feel yourself compelled to back in those days that maybe yes wasn't you know doing what who were some of the guys that influenced you back then well i must say you know more american music i i mean i was Kind of, um, especially coming from a classical background, I was right. kind of into a, a blues thing. I liked, you know, I, I'd been in the, the sort of blues rock and roll bands early uh, uh, when I when I was younger. Yeah, I, I, it was mostly a sort of um, American influence, right. and and you know when the band came out, I, I was totally uh, totally into that sort of Americana, um, Southern rock, uh, blues, mm -hmm. and of course very innovative uh, instrumentally, as, as as you know. It wasn't the S music, right? Huh? But you did so well with it. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was pretty adaptable at the, <laughs> yeah. at the beginning, but it it started to change, and uh, yeah. you know, and I I kind of got interested. You know, I I formed a band with uh, the original uh, the bass player who, who in the Warriors with uh, with John, mm -hmm. and uh, we became a, um, a team, and they kind of took over, really, but. You know, I mean, we we got to uh, record one like Badger supporting uh, supporting Yes after they came back from a, an, an American tour. Exactly. So uh, yeah. you know, and I've always sort of kept in contact with uh, with Chris. Another guy that I've interviewed several times, nice guy. You know, he's got an open invitation every time. Is Michael Debar. And you worked with him in Detective, you know that that was uh, surprising with me that you, you did that as well. What what was that experience like? Yeah, well, uh, that, that was after you know I got off the road with uh, with David Bowie and yeah. um, really uh, it was it was a couple of years of pretty uh, pretty intense you know touring right and I, I, and I wanted wanted kind of a break and I actually was living next to a tennis court and I decided although I was a fan um, I couldn't play and I, I decided to play mm -hmm. and uh, so I spent every day on the tennis court also which was next to Michael where Michael Gabar was living huh. so we, we we met each other and uh, and he had um, just formed detectives so right. I got involved 
Yeah. What? Yeah, I like Michael, man. He's got such a cool history, you know, with when he was a kid oh, he, to yeah. start with love. Yeah, he's and a very interesting uh, Interesting guy. Character. Yeah. Now, I want to tell the, the folks here, I hear you're a very, very good tennis player. <laughs> I don't know about it. Very good. Um, maybe at one time. <laughs> you, you, play, you played in tournaments. Although I, I do play, I, I still play uh, a couple of times a week, yeah. and, uh, and I love it. I, I love the game. Well, that's how you stay in shape. I can tell. I mean, you you know, you you, you haven't gotten the uh, the full effect of being being older. You know, with the uh, the stomach hanging out and all that, like most of us do, because you keep in good shape. <laughs> no, I can't let that happen. <laughs> do, you, do you have a tennis? I try. Court? Do you have a tennis court in your backyard or? No, I, I don't, but I, um, I, in, in the, the two years that I've, I've been here, right. I've met a couple of people that uh, are te coaches and, yep. um, and players who have tennis courts. So I'm very lucky. Uh, I, my, my mind's not working right now. What's the famous uh, uh, place in, uh, in Bradenton that trains everybody? Um, <laughs> I know you know. Um, yes, uh, I am. I am. Be, I am. Uh, I forgot as well, but uh, um, they, they trained all the best. Uh, Sharapova, who used to live here. Um, oh, they, they all. They all trained at the academy. It's uh, I agree. Right. It's Nick something Balateri, I think it is Nick Balateri. It was, orig it was originally Nick. Uh, Nick's, uh, Right. Yeah. IMG, uh, Agassi, and Chang, and all, all of those people. And in fact, um, the Japanese player, Nishikori, he lives close to the, the academy up in Brighton on, on the bay. Huh. Who, who's your favorite tennis player? He's Spanish. He's sort of at the end of his, his career. Right. But I, he's been my favorite tennis player for a long time. Mm -hmm. Nadal. Oh, Nadal, yeah, he's awesome. I agree. Uh, I agree with him. And, of course, you know, Federer has also yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, been a favorite for a long time. Well, I'm going to age myself. I remember Pancho Gonzalez. <laughs> oh, my God. He'll really age <laughs> That's going way back, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember Pancho too, so uh, and I used to go in, way before I played, although my parents played, which is probably where I got uh, some of it from. And um, But I, I used to go to Wimbledon when I lived in London right. and just, you know, just watched a lot of tennis. So uh, I, I don't know why it actually took me so long to... Uh, well, it's a great game. Uh, I used to live in Fort Lauderdale. I went to broadcasting school in Lauderdale, and I used to watch uh, Chrissy Everett. Used to, she's from Lauderdale, and she used to practice oh. at the park there all the time. And I used to sit and watch her watch her practice. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. But I, I would, Florida's a great place to uh, to be in the in the tennis world. It is. I was a I was a big racquetball player. I love racquetball. That's. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little shorter distance than tennis, so uh -huh. I can last longer, I guess. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about Circa. Now, Circa is, is, has become one of my favorite bands. You guys are incredible. My favorite album is And So On. And one of the greatest songs, I talked to Billy about this, is Cast Away, which, you know, and it, there's a video on YouTube about it. Everybody needs to see that. It's, it's such a great tune. Uh, where, where does... I did that video. Oh, you did that video. You're, so you, yeah. So you are good at yeah, it. Well, um, <laughs> uh, Billy and I actually, you know, because Billy's uh, uh, a master of, of a lot of things. Right. And, uh, and w uh, we both got involved in doing uh, doing that video. Oh, it's perfect. It's, it's perfect for the song. Um, what, where does Circa stand now? Is, is it, it's not over for Circa, is it? 
No, not at all. Okay. We're, uh, we're recording uh, a new album. Fantastic. Um, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Hahn is uh, back in the band. Good. He's the guitar player. Yep. Of course, we go back a long way with uh, with Jimmy. And um, and of course Jay, uh, Jay Sotoma. Awesome. And, uh, and of course Billy. I had I had Jimmy on the show as well. Jimmy's Jimmy's a great guy, and you know he does all those commercials. On the side, man. He, he's an incredible yeah, guy. Uh, Jimmy's very talented. He's yep. a very talented guy. Uh, he's a, a little, um, I think, probably too tied down into doing commercials because right. it's a very uh, demanding uh, musical thing. And um, it would be, you know, we, of course, we did some touring uh, with Jimmy. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's just so great uh, live, just an amazing guitar player. Uh, I got the idea of, to bring Jimmy on the show. I watched him do a bunch of Yes songs. And I, it could have been with Circa. It could have been with you guys, I think. And he was so good uh, of playing Steve Howe's parts that he, uh -huh. he totally he totally blew me away. And I said, man, I got to get this guy on my show. He's he's incredible. Well, we did that that long uh, historical compilation. It was fantastic. Of, um, yeah, of, of yes songs. It was great. I mean, you know, it's it was you couldn't tell the difference between you know, and you know, I I'm I'm a very you know uh, hard nosed yes fan from way back from the very beginning. And I had the conversation with Chris Squire, and I I, I, I told him I says, man, I was very disappointed when you guys. Uh, didn't like uh, John Anderson back in the band. I mean, I was, I was pretty upset about that, and I told Chris that. Uh, I hate to say it, but yes is not yes anymore with, with, with the band they have now. I know you like Billy, and I love Billy too, but it's just not the same anymore, you know? And uh, without John and, well, you know? I, I think, you know, um, things change. I, I, I have to uh, disagree with you a little because... Uh, even though I, I, you know, I played with the uh, with the new band recently, right. and uh, you know, it's it's important that uh, that new new blood comes into the band, and you know, I mean, it, it, with the with the John thing, it was unfortunate that you know he he got sick and wasn't able to uh, uh, to tour, mm -hmm. um, but the band wanted to tour. Right, right. That's what Chris you know, told me. Yeah. So um, it it was a, a, a sort of an unfortunate thing, and you know things change, um, bands change, uh, the people in 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 bands. You know they go through, uh, and I know that that hardcore yes fans they 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 really miss the original band. Mm -hmm. and I totally understand it, but you know things change, and it's good to get. You know, Alan was uh, an amazing drummer for Yes for forty years or whatever right. it's been. But but great to you know to have Jay to sort of take take, it, take his place. Mm -hmm. And the same with you know obviously with Chris he he, he passed away and uh, you know his choice was to have Billy right and I, I mean I can tell you that that having played with them um, and it had been a long time since I had been in the band but they were amazing yeah they're really really good band and they're they're, they're nice uh, nice really nice guys and they all get on really well um, being on the road with them was was incredible so I you know I have I have no problem in uh, in you know defending the way that uh, the yes is now and I, I you know and I thought you know Trevor and uh, Trevor John and Rick was uh, was a very cool thing too. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, you know, I actually don't have a, an issue with any of those guys. Uh, I think they made wise choices to, for replacements. Trevor, all those guys were incredible. Uh, Jeff Downs, I've had on the show many times. He's 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 incredible. I nope. It's it's just the singer. <laughs> it's the voice that that bothers me. Uh, and I, you know, that's that's the well, only it's problem. Always, I have. It's always going to be the voice. But, <laughs> but, but you know, the, 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 the fact is that um, you know Trevor Trevor was has a really, really good voice, and he's an incredibly cool guy. Right. Yeah. Great to, great to be with, great to perform with, and, uh, you know, that's the way it is. And I know that, uh, you know, uh, that people miss Anderson, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what can you do? Yeah, I know. Hey, what? Well, it's been a long, long tenure for, for yes. It's... You know, it's, it's surprisingly they they're still together after all these years. That's that's quite an accomplishment right there. You know that they're still making music. So uh, yes, I, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. And uh, you know the, the the music was so beautiful that um, that it, it it really should be played. Oh yeah, Fine. we we've got to have it. I mean. You know what's what's life without progressive rock? I mean, I, I love progressive rock. It's it's my thing. It's always been my thing, and you know, I, I can't I can't exist without it. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> I'm gonna agree with you on 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 this, Peter Banks. Uh, I would I'm like you. He should have been in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and he should. You know, I I agree with you 100 percent on that. That. Uh, oh, definitely. Yeah. That didn't make any sense because you you, know, you got your the original guys should always be part of the band you know and Peter was it didn't make any it didn't make any sense no not me. at all and um, I have I have no idea who who made that decision you know except that it was the uh, it, it, it wasn't the yes people no. it was the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame yeah. He definitely should have been in there. I think I think I think one guy that would have been a, a good addition to Yes is Getty Lee. I mean, Getty did a great job, you know, uh, in that show. Oh, oh, the the, the, the rock and roll. Yeah, I um, I haven't seen it. I I I don't know um, actually what happened, but I know that he played. But I, I have no idea. Um, he played on Roundabout, and he did um, uh, Owner of the Lonely Heart. They they played on both. He played on both of those tracks, and you know, yeah, I guess you can consider uh, Rush as a prog band. A lot of people do, but I kind of say they're on kind of on the line. But uh, mm -hmm. he did a wonderful job. He looked like he fit in with Yes perfectly. But uh, uh, Ray, I I have an, another interview. Okay. That's great. And they're trying to get through to me. We, okay. Uh, uh, Tony, thank, the, I want to say thank you, man. <laughs> thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Uh, uh, it's, it's all my pleasure. I wish, I wish we could keep talking. Uh, there's so much, so much to talk about. That, there there uh, sure is. An hour has, yep. an hour has gone by. That, it went quick. <laughs> it, it did. It did. Uh, let's do it again. We sure will. I, we'll catch up again. And, uh, uh, you can fill me in and let me know what's 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 happening in your life and what your next your next projects. But the album is five stars. I recommend it highly, uh, and it's going to be out September tenth. Yep, that's it. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. All right, Tony. Take care, man. Okay. All right. All right. Bye bye now. Okay. Bye, Ray. You can pre-order End of Innocence by Tony K, which officially is out September tenth. Uh, you can pre-order at www.cherryred.com.uk or just go to cherryredrecords.com. Uh, the, the album's incredible. Uh, for more information about Tony K, you can visit www.yesworld.com. Uh, very, very special thanks to the great Billy James of Glass Onion PR for arranging this interview with Tony K. Uh, if you have comments or suggestions for the show, you can always contact me at interviewingyourlegends at gmail.com. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Interviewing the Legends with Ray Shasho, for the very latest interviews. Hey, folks, it's real news. 
And of course, my book is out. It's entitled The Rockstar Chronicles. It's series one. I'm currently working on series two. It chronicles truths, confessions, and wisdom from the music legends that set us all free. You can order yours today on a collector's edition hardcover or ebook at bookbaby.com and amazon.com. It features over 45 intimate conversations with some of the greatest rock legends the world will ever know. You're not going to want to miss that. And it got five stars from Literary Titan. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, we'll see you next time on Interviewing the Legends with Ray Shasho. Take care now. Bye-bye.